Some people were born sensitive, and other people seem not to be sensitive enough. In Ayurveda, this quality of being sensitive isn't just an emotional one. The body plays a role, not just in how sensitive you are, but in the kinds of things each individual person is sensitive to. So in this video series, we'll talk about how sensitive people can restore strength, um, resiliency, and stability in their lives. And we'll also talk about how people uh, can become more sensitive if they need to. Hi, my name is John Immel, and I'm the director of the Joyful Belly School of Ayurveda. In Ayurveda, the quality of being sensitive is part of the subtle quality, and, um, and that's called sukshma in Sanskrit, in the ancient uh, Ayurvedic classical texts. So sukshma is a word that means uncovers or opens, and you could use this word in the sense of having an open mind, like a sukshma person is a very open-minded person. Uh, you can also use this word sukshma um, to describe fully revealing something in all of its subtlety, like a uh, a person who has a lot of sukshma quality might be very perceptive or also might be very receptive. In English, we use the word subtle, um, which is the English equivalent of the word sukshma, um, to talk about something that is so delicate or precise that's, um, that it's actually difficult to analyze or describe. In other words, uh, something that's very subtle might be something difficult to understand or that cause and effect are very um, mysterious. So in English, we say a person is subtle if they are aware of fine distinctions or can perceive the full effect of an action. Sometimes we might use the word subtle to talk about a person who's crafty or cunning, who's able to use cleverness and indirect methods to achieve something. Uh, we might also, or actually the most common way in Ayurveda that we use the word subtle as practitioners is a person who's easily affected by things, either their environment or an herb or a pharmaceutical um, an, or easily affected in relationships, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, subtle is one of the 20 gunas in Ayurveda that's used to characterize people. Uh, you could even say uh, the 20 different bio patterns that people's bodies have. Um, and, um, and so we can use this, this bio pattern subtle to characterize a person, a disease, or a medicine. We could say a medicine was a very subtle medicine, or that disease had a very subtle effect on the person. And the opposite of subtle, the opposite guna of subtle is gross or materialized um, or large, and the and the word for that is shtula in uh, in Sanskrit. Um, so, uh, so on the one hand, we have subtle things that are small, immaterial, um, uh, and uh, and then on the other side, we have these gross, manifested, large uh, things, and um, and so Ayurveda is going to put these two uh, words as opposites on a spectrum and then assess the individual therapeutically um, on that spectrum. And this is similar to some of the other gunas. We have heavy and light that measures the mass of something or the density and liquidity of something that measures um, uh, viscosity and thickness of fluids in the body. Um, and so, uh, so subtle, um, again, means something immaterial, uh, something that uh, could be imperceptible or perceived differently by different individuals or someone who's easily affected. All right, so this, the first meaning of the word subtle has to do with perception. What uh, perception of meaning, cause, and effect uh, uh, specifically or most often? So the ramifications and the effects of things that you do in your life are often really difficult to predict. Uh, they, uh, those effects sometimes unfold over time. If you to make a big choice in your life, you don't know how that's going to turn out. You don't know how that's going to affect your life. You know, you could, for example, choose to marry someone. And 
do do you know what your life is going to be like 10 years after marrying that person? Uh, it's a really difficult thing to per, uh, to predict. So we would say in that case that marrying someone has a very subtle effect on the person because it has a big effect that's hard to know in advance um, over time. And there's a branch of mathematics that deals with uh, complexity theory. Uh, and in... Uh, um, and in complexity theory or chaos theory, a small change can have big effects. And the classic example of that in mathematics is the butterfly theory, where a butterfly flapping its wings in Beijing um, can cause turbulence that could ultimately cause a storm in San Francisco several weeks later. And, uh, and that, that idea is that very, very micro changes uh, could have big effects. For example, if a rock was sitting on the top of a mountain, a little blow, uh, puff of wind could blow it down the left side of the mountain or the right side of the mountain, and that would have really big ramifications if it like hit someone's house because of the trajectory of the rock, right? So our lives are like this. Small things, small chance encounters um, can end up having big effects on the rest of our life. And, uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's hard. There's always that joke that, um, that I like to tell my kids. If a rooster lays an egg on the top of a roof, which way will it fall, the left or the right? And after thinking about it for several minutes, um, you know, the, uh, uh, a smart person might come up with the answer. Uh, that roosters don't lay eggs, right? And so that's the joke. Uh, but we can't predict what, uh, if there was an egg on the roof, it'd be very difficult to predict which side of the roof it would fall on. So in the first sense, subtle refers to perception of cause and effect and meaning, um, especially as regards things that affect your nature. And um, and the second sense that we use the word subtle is, is how materialized something is. And there's, and there's no coincidence that these go hand in hand, right? If something is materialized, like a, a boulder or a slab of steak or someone built a house, that's manifested, right? That doesn't exist in, in potential form, but exists in actual form. And for example, I could have a bunch of lumber on the side of the property that I'm going to use to build the house and, you know, we don't really know what the house is going to look like until it's done. I mean, hopefully it looks like the architectural plans, but I could change the plans midway and build something that looks a little different. So the lumber is kind of potential house and the, and the, and the completed house is the actual house, right? So there's this, how materialized is a decision? Um, deciding to go to university next year is really different than graduating with a university degree. Or that's even different from having a job or the job making you enough money to support yourself and your family, right? So uh, we can talk about how actualized a decision is um, where, where it's from the idea stage or the spiritual, immaterial, abstract phase to the totally manifested and materialized phase. Uh, and, um, and those are, you know, and, uh, and we're, we can, we could talk about how things, um, are, uh, uh, how that's affecting a person, um, at different levels, in other words. So subtle can measure a level of abstraction that a person tends to have in their ideas and in their lifestyle, um, or, and, or their potential as opposed to their actualization and gross, subtle and gross being the two opposites, um, gross on the other side of that spectrum, measures what's realized, actual, corporal, what's concrete, okay? So uh, thoughts, for example, in general, are very subtle and have big effects on us, but, they're, but they aren't the thing itself, right? If I'm thinking about a cat, that's not the actual cat, right? Even if I have an image of in my mind of the cat that's fairly accurate, it's still different than like touching the cat, or even seeing the cat um, it, uh, versus thinking about the cat. So thoughts only represent things. They aren't the thing itself. But the problem is, is often they're all we have, right? They're all we have to go on. And so we'll be making decisions based upon um, 
some idea we have of something rather than the thing itself. And that gets us into all kinds of trouble frequently because we're seeing things through the lens of our perception. So another example is our feelings, right? Our feelings are only approximations of the true meaning. Uh, the actual meaning and, the, and what we think we should feel about it are not always in alignment. So we might get really, really upset at something and then realize we um, uh, didn't understand it fully or, uh, or that we, made a, we, we were blind to some other aspect that was critical and we got upset for no reason. This happens all the time in our lives and it, and it causes problems in our lives. Right, so, um, so Ayurveda recognizes that and says, hey, we gotta pay attention to perception itself. So um, uh, uh, a sort of chronic example of this is trauma. If a person's been traumatized, then, uh, then when they're in similar circumstances, they'll get triggered even against their will. Even if they know that they shouldn't be afraid in the current circumstance, it's very hard for them to let go of that fear. And they may even experience all kinds of uh, release of stress hormones and things that get them into um, you know, a stressed out state. Uh, and, and even though they know consciously that they don't have to be afraid. So, um, so in that sense, that's what I mean by, uh, by our perception and experience doesn't always match reality. Even pain itself is subtle, right? We're not feeling, uh, when we feel pain about something, um, that's, uh, that is also uh, a sensation about it, not the thing itself, right? So, so our body has all these different uh, levels of abstraction that are either close, closest to the thing or more, more removed from the, the thing itself. And the more removed it is, the more mistakes we can make about it. All right, here's a third sense. Um, and it goes along, again, these are, these are not, uh, the, all these different senses are kind of uh, go hand in hand with each other. So in the third sense, uh, subtle means the ability to penetrate your, all your tissues or deeply into your being or even to alter your being or nature. Uh, so we talk about so, that we say in Ayurveda that something is subtle if it changes your nature or essence, uh, and that could be physically, mentally, or spiritually. For example, if you get really excited about a new idea, um, a philosophical idea, like I don't know, um, a socialist or capitalist idea, right? Like, oh, capitalism is good or socialism is good you're gonna start making behavior changes on the basis of that new philosophical idea. And that might change, that starts to change your nature, right? It starts to change, in a way, who you are. So anything that penetrates your nature or alters your nature or essence, uh, we would say is subtle. And on the physical side of things, anything that penetrates your tissues deeply, like certain pharmaceuticals have a big effect on your whole body and even your emotional and mental state. Um, some herbs do too, and food does as well. In fact, one of the main theories of Ayurveda is that all the things you do have effects on you, and we really, really need to know that um, so that these effects aren't just happening to us, but that they're consciously chosen, right? You, if uh, We all know that birds of a feather flock together, a popular saying in English, uh, birds of a feather flock together means that uh, if you start hanging out with a new group of friends, you're going to start to think differently. Well, is that the way you want to think? What direction is that going in? Is that going to end well, right? Um, we always want to remember, and this was a, a common way of thinking in the ancient world, is that we want to uh, begin with the ends in mind, not just that Oh, hey, I like this. This is fun, but hey, this could lead me to a bad place. Well, I'll think about that later, right? Uh, in Ayurveda, we're going to think about that in the beginning. We're going to begin with the end in mind so that we're not uh, too jostled uh, by subtle things in our life. Uh, so, yeah, um, example of something that penetrates our physical being is alcohol. There's a reason why we call alcohol spirits, right? Um, that... And that's because it affects our spirit, it affects our soul uh, and how we think and feel for a little while until the effects of the alcohol wear off. Uh, I said earlier that subtle measures a depth of understanding. 
uh, or receptivity or openness to change. The nature or essence of something is not immediately apparent. You know, someone may have this cool new spiritual idea and then you try it out for 10 years uh, or 15 years and you're like, oh, crud, that hurt me, right? Or something like that. That happens. Um, and, uh, and it happens with food too. Some new fad movement that says, hey, this has happened in the 80s. Fat is bad. Carbohydrates are good. We should all be eating plates of pasta every day because that's what health food is. Well, and then fast forward 25 years later, that's not the whole story. Now it's empty carbs are bad, but but good fats are really good, right? And the and the and the the winds of um, have changed in that area, uh, and we saw some problems with eating a heavy carb diet. And then I'm sure 20 years from now we'll have more appreciation of problems of a good fat diet. I don't know, I don't know, but the fact is is that the effects of things are a little unpredictable. Uh, so, um, so we, you know, the, that means that, uh, the nature or essence of something is not immediately apparent or obvious at first. So, Hey, are you willing to give it a shot anyway? How impulsive are you? Right. Um, is it, is it good to be impulsive or not? Those are, uh, some of the, you know, those are important questions. Now, lastly, and I would say, um, most narrowly or, or even like the least used way of subtle, but worth including is subtle as being small in size. And here's a picture of a deer tick on a person's finger. Now with that little tick crawling on your skin somewhere, you may not notice it. And so that's why we talk about things like bacteria being subtle because suddenly you're infected. You can't see what's changed, but something has, uh, you know, you can't see why the changes happened, but you have a fever and you feel bad and your joints ache, etc. right? Well, you may have the flu, a virus, or you may have a bacterial infection. So those little bacteria are hard to see. So it appears very subtle. And, um, you know, and a gross thing is something big and obvious. But we also just also want to remember that just because something's small doesn't mean that... Um, that it is subtle always. Like, you know, there's lots and lots of air around us, but air, so air is enormous, but it's still kind of subtle because you can't see it. Um, anyway, or something very small can have uh, gross effects, like kidney stones in Ayurveda would be called gross because it's, it's, it's something manifested and tangible, even though it may be very small size. So this last category is a little, can be misleading. Um, anyway, uh, to uh, to do a quick review before we go on to uh, a little deeper into subtle in the body um, is that subtle can mean perception of meaning, cause and effect. It could be a level of materialization or actualization or manifestation. Um, it could be uh, the ability of something to penetrate your uh, physical body, like blood penetrates every tissue in your body. Blood is subtle. Um, or it could be something that penetrates your mental, um, uh, your mental beliefs that alters your nature or essence. It could be a depth of understanding or receptivity about something, and it could also be size. All right, why does subtle matter? Right? Okay, I've given this this uh, expanded definition here. Why does it matter? Well, okay, if you're very sensitive to how other people are feeling all the time, you're not in that much control of your future. Now, of course, we want to be sensitive. We want to be affected by people, but not so affected that we lose sight of the truth or that we, um, uh, or that we lose sight of our goals, right? That we get distracted and derailed. We don't want that. What we want to do is be appropriately responsive to people's needs, right? So that's observing the mean, right? The, the, the midpoint uh, uh, between the two extremes. Sometimes people are easily startled. We want to know how to help them calm down, you know, that they aren't startled by loud noises or things like that, uh, but instead feel more solid and steady, even when, in, in those conditions. Uh, maybe a person has a tendency to be a daydreamer or a pie in the sky idealist. And we want to bring them their heads down, their head out of the clouds and back into reality, so they can make more solid choices and be more stable in their life. 
that they can focus on projects that are practical and fruitful and think in more concrete and consistent ways. Um, if you're a meat and potatoes person who finds it difficult to think outside the box, we'll show you ways to increase subtle so that you can think more creatively, get inspired, um, even get motivated uh, to help you contemplate ultimate truths and see subtle connections between things. So where are you on the subtle versus concrete spectrum? Do you need more subtle quality or less subtle quality? So it is important to be aware of how things are affecting your nature. You don't want to uh, miss the subtleties of things and then wake up and realize that you're not the kind of person you wanted to be or you don't have the kind of life that you were aiming for, uh, that you're suffering from unwanted side effects of something, whether it's side effects of food, herbs, pharmaceuticals, or bad choices. Um, you know, if you, if you uh, thought a relationship was going to be great but ended up traumatized, well, maybe there's a way that you could have made a, a more stable decision that would have improved your life instead of undermining your quality of life. So, uh, so subtle is that art of studying the unintended consequences or unpredictable side effects. Uh, even when a person has something uh, really obvious and extreme happen to them, like an injury, right? You're like, oh, injury isn't subtle. Like they broke their leg. Well, the roughness of the injury does have a subtle effect um, because it could it traumatizes the person and changes how they behave. My daughter slipped off one of those bouncy houses because they were uh, there was a birthday party. It started to rain and everybody was having a good old time on the bouncy house. And she fell, uh, slipped off of it, and fell and hurt her back. And she was never as bold physically uh, after that. It's been about uh, four or five years now since that happened, and she is much more reserved and, and less risky physically since that happened. So yes, the injury was obvious, but the effect was subtle. So trauma is both gross and subtle, right? Um, uh, so because these things are going to be infecting your whole way of life, they're important, and it's also important to know how to influence your nature on purpose. So sometimes our nature and, and our reality gets influenced by accident, but we want to also know how to do it on purpose. Like for example, a lot of people drink coffee specifically so they could become a different person, right? They don't want to be like them, uh, their, their true nature, which may be a little too tired, or uh, they might feel like, hey, I'm not inspired enough. I'm not you know, going to impress my boss at work enough. So I need to be different than me. I need to be a different kind of person. I need to drink coffee to get me there, right? So people drink and use herbs and pharmaceuticals specifically because they alter their internal function. They, they specifically because they alter their nature. And, um, and so we want to learn how to do that well. All right, you can obviously see that in this uh, video series, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be hard to teach even. Because uh, what are we studying? We're studying unintended side effects, right? So we're studying a mystery in a way, right? Uh, so I want to disclose in advance the difficulty and really the subtlety of teaching about subtle quality. Uh, all of these causes and effects um, are, are, are difficult to, uh, to grasp. Who can claim perfect knowledge of past and future events? Who can predict the effect of things, right? So on a, some level, health and all of Ayurveda is subtle. Figuring out what's good for you, what's going to be healthy for you is subtle. So we could put this whole course into this video series. And I'm going to resist the urge to do that and make it longer than it needs to be. Um, but, you know, what is truth? It's a hard question to answer, right? Uh, and uh, fortunately, brilliant minds have thought about this topic for centuries upon centuries, and there are some wonderful, um, you know, uh, metaphys philosophers of metaphysics that answer this question. Well, we're going to study it a little more simply here, we're, but we're going to do it humbly. I'm going to try my best to enumerate the main causes of increased subtle, and I welcome student feedback in this area. Um, subtle is actually considered to be the most potent guna in Ayurveda 
because it penetrates thoroughly through the whole being of the client. So it's more powerful than any other uh, guna in Ayurveda. So this is going to be a great adventure. I look forward to uh, going on it with you. And, uh, and we'll continue in the next video with important examples of subtle quality in the physical body.